Hi everyone, welcome back to my video. Um, today I will be doing a tutorial on how I fill my sketchbooks. Um, these are my last three sketchbooks from the past, maybe like three or four years. Um, yeah, I don't fill one every year, kind of a iffy situation, but um, as you can tell from my previous two sketchbook tours that are also on my channel, these boys are pretty thick, you know? They, they've, they've been through a lot, they've seen a lot, and uh, uh, I feel like it would be interesting to just share how I fill these, just cause like, me personally, like, when I'm filling my sketchbooks, I also tend to look up a lot of videos on how I fill my own sketchbooks, and I feel like I've gained enough knowledge to where I can like, fully dedicate myself to a spread and just fill it up on my own. As you can tell, um, I get better with these spreads throughout time, but um, they've definitely seen better days. So this is not like a solid tutorial on how to make your spreads perfect or anything, but this is just more of a like tips and tricks to do uh, when you're bored or when you don't know what to do with your sketchbook and you feel like it needs a little, a little something something. So, um, as I talk about my sketchbook tips, I will also be doing a sketchbook spread in the background. Uh, I've, I'll do my best to explain what I'm doing, um, but most of the time my sketchbook spreads, spreads do take a while, maybe like one to two days for me to make. Um, so this is definitely going to be a new experience, and it might not turn out exactly the way I want it to, but you know what, whatever. Trial and error. So, um, this is my current sketchbook, uh, sketchbook number 13. Yep, we're already on that number. Um, so I'll be working in this one today, and this is how she looks so far. She's very thick as well, just like her predecessors, and uh, I feel like it'd be really interesting uh, to go through my thought process, especially after three sketchbooks. I've learned a lot about how I like to fill my sketchbooks, and just like, in general, what I like to do with them, and what like, things I need to do in order to make them like this. Um, so enough with the blabbing. Um, let's just get started with the sketchbook and um, I'll spill all my secrets. So let's go. Hello everyone, it's voiceover me here. Yeah, haven't seen y'all in a long time. Well, before we start on with the video and me giving you my tips, um, I know you've been patient, but um, just wanted to give a little spiel about sketchbooks in general. I'm sure you've probably heard this around in other videos that you may have watched, because I know for sure that I have watched a lot of videos that say this. Um, sketchbooks are not meant to be perfect at all in any way. Um, as a matter of fact, that's their whole purpose, that they're supposed to like be whatever you want them to be. Um, and so I really want to reinforce the idea that Sketchbooks are not supposed to be something that you burn yourself out over or that you feel like you get stressed out about. Um, I've definitely had that experience before um, and that was when I was working on like my first few sketchbooks and all that kind of stuff and I just feel like it's necessary to say that you shouldn't be worrying about your sketchbooks that often but um, if you want to make them prettier that's definitely up to you. That is your choice and I totally support that. Um, but you know it's always good to keep multiple sketchbooks because i feel like if you want to make one pretty you can make that one pretty but i also myself have a let's call it a junk journal um where i literally just do whatever i want in it like i do warm-ups and all that kind of stuff and it's very beneficial just as an artist to like have that type of like background thing that you do that doesn't necessarily need to be shared with anyone and doesn't necessarily need to even like see the light of day basically so that's just one recommendation i have don't stress out too much about one sketchbook you can keep multiple sketchbooks you can keep one that's pretty one that's for watercolors one that's just for warming up and doing random scribbles in because i for sure know that i did that so yeah that's just my little disclaimer about sketchbooks don't worry about making them perfect what matters most is that one, you learn, and two, you have the most fun that you can, because I've learned that I like to have fun with my sketchbooks, and I feel way better about my sketchbooks when I have fun with them than when I do a good page. So, yeah. So, my first tip is actually um, to just go on Pinterest. Um, I know a lot of people do it, like a lot of people. I've seen tons and tons of videos of people just saying that they go on Pinterest and um, find references basically for whatever they want to draw, but I cannot stress how actually helpful that is. 
Um, because actually what's going on here in this drawing is from a Pinterest reference that I found. It was on this post that I'll be showing on screen. For some reason, the idea just came up to my head that maybe I should just draw my OC Scarlet in that. And that's what I did. Sometimes you don't need to put much thought into whatever you look at Pinterest because I know that as an artist, like Pinterest is also flooded with a bunch of like really good and talented artists, which I personally enjoy looking at. It's just that sometimes it can be a little discouraging to look at other people's art and be like, oh, I can't make that. So I guess I just won't make anything today. So I just really encourage you to like, just look through Pinterest poses, color schemes, or literally anything else that could bring up inspiration. I'd say just for the first few times, just stay away from, um, I guess, other artists art because that could be a little discouraging. Especially when you're just trying to like get some ideas or like you don't really necessarily feel like you're at your best moment right now um, to draw something like super extravagant or whatever. And you just want to warm up. Um, I feel like going on Pinterest for poses and like different types of inspiration is very useful. I do it a lot. Um, and yeah, just go, go crazy, go ham, like search up anything, whether you want to draw animals, flowers you name it if you want to draw it you go ahead and like look look up a reference on pinterest maybe even better go on google because a lot of time google doesn't give you a lot of artists work basically and they give you more like real life references so i feel like even going on google is something that's really beneficial to find either poses or something like that but whatever search engine that you want to use go ahead and use it um i think it's very useful to help you at least get that like sensation of like yeah i want to draw this or maybe i think uh, i'll try this today so yeah that's my first tip my second tip is pretty obvious from what i'm drawing um which is draw your ocs or even make an oc if you're the kind of person who loves making characters or just wants something um creative not only do you have something to draw by either drawing a previous oc or making an oc but it also helps you with, I guess, your imaginative thinking. Uh, it helps you build world. It helps you basically think about um, making a character and making them suit your taste, basically. It's kind of like a self-insert, but not really. If you want to do a self-insert, that is totally fine. That is up to you. Um, I'm pretty sure I had a self-insert at some point. Um, she's kind of she's not something I draw anymore, but you know what? It's whatever. Make an OC. I have a lot of pages in my sketchbooks that are dedicated to a lot of the OCs that I've had probably since fourth grade even. Um, right now, my OC Scarlet and my OC Kit, which is the cat he's holding, have been with me since like maybe even middle school. Um, obviously, their designs were very different and uh, I upgraded them over the years. But I feel like just having a character that you can draw over and over again uh, without feeling tired or just like being able to have something as a backup to draw is always something really nice and it just gives your art a personal touch that shows what kind of a person you are basically so making an oc is very is a very fulfilling process i think and they're just really fun to draw like i draw my oc kit and my oc scarlet and my other ocs so often i probably have like hundreds of pages of them um and it could also just be about developing their lore or just creating like alternate universes so like here i'm just i found this guy with like some kind of like samurai-ish outfit and i thought hey that kind of ties in with the backstory of my oc scarlet who i don't know if it's gonna sound cringe but was also technically like raised in a military background type family and all that kind of stuff you know it could literally be anything that's that's basically what i'm saying like your oc can be anything you want it to be and it doesn't necessarily have to be human type either like it could be like a little animal or a little critter or like a fantasy type um creature like D&D &D or um it's basically just up to your imagination and just drawing them is really fun like it's super fun and you get to share them with your friends if you have any art friends that also have OCs that is so fun I love hearing about my friends OCs and I love talking about my OCs honestly um so yeah that is my second tip make or even redraw your OCs 
So for my third tip, I'd say stick to a certain amount of colors. Like you could either randomly pick three colors from let's say either a color wheel or like a set of rayons that you have. Just stick to whatever color you get. And if you don't like it, you can always, I kind of cheat sometimes and I feel like I want to draw blue. So I just pick whatever colors I like. Um, probably stick to less. So as long as it's less than five, I'd say you're in a pretty good space because that helps you kind of limit yourself but also allow you to be more creative with your color choices and it also just helps with creating such a cohesive spread throughout the entire sketchbook spread um i personally do that a lot i use a lot of complementary colors like blue and yellow also green and red um not much purple and orange but i think just trying different color schemes could really help boost um just your ability to use color for spreads and it doesn't always necessarily have to be things of that color, you can really go outside of the box. So let's say you have like an OC that you want to draw, like just draw a silhouette of that OC and color it in. I've done that before with my OC kit where I just grabbed like a purple marker and just blocked in his silhouette and just like outlined it with a simple black pen. And I think it came out pretty okay. Not my favorite spread, but I do think that the idea is still there. That using color could also help you enhance your color compositions on in the future. I know I'm sounding really um, artsy smartsy right now but i'm legitimately speaking from experience like i've used color so much and i noticed that just being able to like play around with it is the best thing that you can do in your sketchbook because not only does it make your sketchbook look way more lively but at the same time it helps you in your own personal journey just learning about color schemes color concept like where colors should go based on their value and all that kind of stuff like i know i'm saying a lot of like gibberish i think like art gibberish because most of the time I don't even understand how to use these terms myself. But I mean, it's really helpful. I, I find it really helpful. And I know that if you're the kind of person who doesn't really feel confident with colors, this is definitely a way to help you not only make your spreads prettier, but also just like figure out what kind of colors you like and just figure out what compositions you like to do with your colors. Um, and if you're not a color person, that is totally fine too. Like figuring out how to use values for like pencil sketches are also really good. Um, I did a pencil sketch in my recent sketchbook, but I'm not gonna show it because I feel like that would be good for the sketchbook or and don't want any spoilers guys so yeah that is my third tip okay moving on to tip number four it actually involves collaging you've seen this a lot in my previous sketchbook videos if you are a returning viewer but if you're new to my channel hello i love to collage i am kind of like a little raccoon who likes to sneak around the house and find whatever shiny things that i can find because honestly most of the stuff that i get for my collaging is from food trash yes it may sound weird but don't worry i clean the packaging before i put it in my sketchbook so it doesn't feel get that like nasty smell in it or whatever okay i clean my things before or I put them in my sketchbook. Okay, okay. Now that we got that out of the way, um, collaging is very good for sketchbooks. Um, not only because it like you know makes it thick, makes it you know that good chunky sketchbook that we all like. Well, at least you guys like because you're watching my video. Thanks a lot. Um, but it also just like helps fill in space. It's literally like the perfect space filler for when you don't know what to put inside of your sketchbook and you're like, ah oh, man, I can't draw something this tiny or I can't draw something this big. Like this whole page is like taking up my brain space. So what do I do? Grab a piece of trash and slap it on. There. There. easy as that like it doesn't necessarily have to be trash either it's just like literally anything you find pretty be a raccoon think like a raccoon what would a raccoon put in their little pile so i pick up things like chocolate wrappers that are like golden leaf wrappers literally like stamps that i found from like the 2000s that are probably older than i am um clothing tags that are like aesthetically pleasing or that have cool typography on them or just things that i printed out honestly sometimes i just go on pinterest and pin print things out but i know some people might not have access to a printer and that's totally okay okay like you do not need access to a printer at all like you can literally find pretty trash everywhere like if you see a napkin like literally i think i had a coffee bean and tea leaf napkin and i literally just stuck it onto one of my other sketchbooks more personal ones and i don't know it, it, it looks cute it looks nice and i drew on it and i really like how that spread came out so yeah experiment with a bunch of trash that you find that is my tip and if you want you can just like rearrange it throughout your sketchbook see how it fits see how it looks like with all your other little doodles or knickknacks or whatever and just stick it on there slap it on there um another good thing is using photos so like if you have photos from an old magazine or whatever and you feel like hey that has potential like you can literally like cut out whatever you want and stick it on your sketchbook and draw on top of it easy as that like you don't have to do the background work you don't have to do all that realistic artwork or whatever like literally just slap on a photo boom you're done even better you can add on to it yourself um so similarly like how i did in my previous sketchbook um i just saw people wearing glasses and i was like cool what can make this even cooler 
I know, drawing like weird droopy stuff or doodles on them. And I did that and I actually really like how it came out. Um, I like graphic design, obviously, because I like a lot of art stuff. Get a new hobby, please. Um, but I feel like just being able to like alter new things that already exist is like a skill in of itself. So if you want to learn more about collaging, I 100% encourage it and it will take a huge load off of you when you don't know what to put in your sketchbook. Like trust collage. So yeah, that is my fourth main tip. Tip number five is using different mediums. So what I mean by different mediums doesn't necessarily need to stick with the traditional mediums of like watercolor paint, sketching pencils, colored pencils, like all that kind of stuff. I mean like whatever you can find that you can do art with. Um, I know for me, I've used watercolors a lot, um, but I've always wanted to branch out. So recently I found a pack of like pastels for maybe five bucks. And I've been using them a lot more recently uh, simply because I want to breach out. I want to find different ways to use different materials so that I can basically create art anywhere I go. Um, and I think that it's also something that helps you really push your ideas outside the box because what you can do with watercolor, you can't necessarily do it with pastels. And what you can do with pastels, you can't necessarily do with acrylic paint or let's say with um, charcoal pencils. So it really helps you just figure out what type of art you wanna make based on the materials that you make. And I know people say like, your materials are basically a tool to help you find your own unique art style and what you like. And another thing, materials don't necessarily have to stick with the traditional definition of materials like watercolors, acrylics, paints, all that kind of stuff that you normally see in arts and crafts or it could literally be anything. For example, one time I tried using whatever charcoal was left from a candle that I burned I mean it didn't turn out the best but at least that was an idea like you can literally go pick up leaves from the side of the road if you want and just like do something with that like I've seen works where people take like nature or leaves or even like flowers and make something really creative out of it and so I really want to encourage you to just like try putting yourself out there you know like try new things that's that's basically what I'm saying and if you want for a starting idea, you can use highlighters. If you have any highlighters or, um, lying around your home, use them. Uh, that is my little challenge for you today. Try making art with highlighters. It could be any type of art. Um, it could be in any style. Literally, go crazy. Go ham. Just use highlighters and see what you can make out of it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to keep it. You can just chuck it away or stick it in your sketchbook. I mean, I'm just saying it could be one of those like dump pages because I have those too. Tip number six, a relatively short one because I don't apply it that much to my sketchbook, but you know what, filler, um, is to draw from life. I don't do this that much, but the times that I have, it's come out pretty okay. Drawing food, food, food is the good one. If you draw food, you best trust, it will come out looking delicious. Like, why do you think Ghibli food looks good? Like, why do you think you wanna eat the screen every time you look at a Ghibli movie? Exactly, but I digress. Drawing from life is just something that a lot of like people tend to do. Um, me, because I am chronically on online and I do not look up for my phone every three hours um it's kind of hard for me to get out and touch grass unless I'm in school because uh, area is not that good for uh scenic pictures so it's a little bit of a challenge to get outside but you know what when you can I'd say take pictures or enjoy the moment or do observational drawings um I literally drew um my order from an 85 cafe and i just drew whatever food i got and it turned out really good so just saying try something new like i've said before like a hundred times already because your sketchbook is for that and for all you fellow aspiring artists which is a probably small percent of you because let's be honest we have very low chances not to be depressing but you know it's statistically um that, that's good for your portfolio if you're trying to get into college which is what I'm trying to do at the moment. So sorry for not making the video, guys. There's life stuff going on, you know? But in any case, it doesn't hurt to try. And finally, for my last tip, tip number seven is to make a bad page it happened you know we all want that pretty sketchbook that we see online and that we see other people doing because i've done that before and it's not always the case you know and we gotta kind of set ourselves to be realistic about our sketchbooks not that they can't be pretty but that they can't always be pretty you know 
make a space for you to just be you and get ideas out because in the end what good are your ideas if you don't put them down on paper because you're afraid to fail you know i could have had so many cool ocs probably in the past if i hadn't focused on perfection so often and that is why i can't stress enough the importance about keeping a separate junk sketchbook because i've done that recently this past year and oh boy, has it changed my perspective. It is literally the book I do not care about, cannot give two coin flips about, because I know that in the end, I'm not showing it to anyone. Zip, zilt, no one. Like, it's locked in a vault, six feet under, until I want to use it. So, thinking about sketchbooks in a pretty way or in an aesthetically pleasing way, simply because you want it to be aesthetic, doesn't help as an artist like if you fully want to be an artist like that's something you gotta kind of accept and i know people do this as a pastime i am not hating on people who do this as a pastime i love that you're doing this as a pastime and i encourage this to continue i encourage you to continue doing sketchbooks and all that kind of stuff but i don't know i guess that's just a personal thing i don't want to say that you can't do art as a hobby because obviously art is kind of a hobby and when you turn it into a career it becomes really different so i'm just speaking from my own personal experience i'm not pushing anything on you you know you do you uh but I, I don't know making bad sketchbook pages intentionally also just helps makes the pretty ones look like 10 times prettier like let's say you put like a pile of trash next to like an expensive gucci bag which one looks way better than the other one the gucci bag i don't know why i compared it to a gucci bag i, I someone help me with my references here but you know I, I just want it to feel like you have something that you can be proud of and at the same time you have something you can learn from you know so yeah look at me being all inspirational I'm not usually this inspirational, so um, take what you can, people. Worst case scenario, you just take a piece of tape and tape the spread together, and you're done. Even you guys don't know about some of my pages, and that's exactly why. Okay, I know I said the last tip was my last one, um, but these are just some little extra tidbits that I thought of um, because I realized I had extra time, so why not talk about them? A little thing that you could do when you don't have any ideas or what you can draw in like a very specific space is just doing like poems, like searching up a small poem or like writing down a certain thought that you have at that moment is also really good space filler. I do that a lot of my sketchbooks, so especially with like silly little cat doodles um, showing what kind of mood I'm in in that day. Another thing you can do is redraw old sketchbook art. Let's say you have an old artwork that you really liked, but you feel like you could do better, you know? Redraw that. There's no shame in redrawing your sketchbook uh, spreads, and I highly recommend you do it because it shows progress. Another thing you can do is if your sketchbook's not feeling like home, you should just use another sketchbook. You know, paper and texture and all that kind of stuff does play a factor into how you view a sketchbook. Um, for my latest sketchbook, actually, I kind of don't like the green color, but I kind of just forced myself to use it because I spent like 20 bucks on it, so I wasn't about to chuck it out the window just yet. But you know what? always take into consideration what kind of a sketchbook you're getting and um experiment with different types when you can and this goes with the idea of decorating your sketchbooks because decorating just gives it a really nice personal touch that makes it feel like it's a place where you can be yourself and a place where you can just decorate to your heart's content if you want it's also the reason why I kind of hoard stickers because I love thinking about how they can decorate my future sketchbook but then I end up not using them so um don't be a sticker hoarder like me. Use your stickers. It's fine. Another little thing I learned from a separate video was learn how to not care about your sketchbook. So that basically means just like throwing it out the window and running it over with your car. I don't know. Like I did that when I first got my sketchbook and it kind of took away that anxiety of like first page or whatever where I didn't feel like the first page had to be perfect which is why I just did random doodles on it and I drew something. So yeah, just run over your sketchbook, throw it in the trash and then take it out. I don't care. Like if you're okay, with doing that that helps you kind of lose respect for your sketchbook but also just gain a freedom from that perfectionism and when all else fails take a break y'all need it like if you feel like you're burnt out and your sketchbook is not looking the way you want it to look and you've tried everything in this video which i suggest you do try everything in this video take a break that is the best thing you can do when you have no idea what to do because that is going to help refresh your brain and just make you feel a whole lot better about what you're doing you can't really make good art in a bad mindset unless you want to make like vent art or whatever like you know that that can still happen but you know 
it's it's when you're feeling better that your art just tends to come out better you know your mindset is a big factor into what your art really shows about you and also just how it comes out so yeah take a break whenever you need it or whenever you feel like hey this is not working out i need to take like a whole month or whatever which is what i did i, I took a whole month let's be honest that is totally okay take care of yourself and as for the spread that you can see going on in the background, um, I'm kind of almost finished. Uh, to be honest, it took me surprisingly maybe like two to three hours to fill this sketchbook. Um, I kind of had to speed up this video because otherwise it would have been like two and a half hours long. But I feel like I did make progress with this video. I've learned how to like basically record myself live drawing without feeling the intense pressure. Although I did feel some pressure, um, you know, I think I'm learning to record live now because uh, let's just say I'm not the best at drawing in public. So, yeah. As always, thank you guys so, so much um, for your continued support. Thank you for being on my page, even though um, my account has been kind of dead for this summer. But, you know, I really appreciate you guys. Every time you comment, it just brings a smile to my face. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the next video, which is my next sketchbook tour. Who knows when I'll finish it? Who knows if I'll even finish the last few pages? Because, you know, as we said in this video, you can do anything with your sketchbook. And that also means skipping pages if you want to. So yeah, stay tuned for my next video. And if you're new here, consider consider subscribing if you like my sketchbook videos and my interesting conversations. Anyways, thanks y'all for watching again. Bye!